So welcome, hello. Thanks for joining this webinar about building better business cases. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about building better business cases. And um, you know what does that mean in terms of being able to uh, do it more effectively? And you know how do you do this where you can kind of standardize your business cases, streamline them, simplify them? So with that, we're gonna jump into just a quick bit of housekeeping for those who aren't familiar with GoToWebinar, which is the platform we're using today. So we would like to make this a little bit interactive. Uh, you guys are actually on mute, so we're gonna use the questions pane. So if you see on your dialog for your webinar, you should have the questions pane. And if you have any questions, you can go in there and log a question there. And then you'll see your answer show up in the pane just underneath there. Another point of order here is that we will be recording the presentation today and the recording will be provided as soon as we get it all rendered and uh, in good shape to send you guys off the link. Usually it doesn't take more than an hour or two right after the webinar. All right, with that, there's a quick copyright message and we'll move along. And a little bit about uh, me. So I'm Mike Taylor. I'm the president and founder of Innovative E. We are a consulting and solutions company that does a lot of work in the project management space, portfolio and project management space. As at a part of doing that work, we actually work with everything that's kind of end-to-end -end from strategy with customers through ideation, building, developing, and refining business cases, execution of projects, and then benefits realization. So we kind of work the whole gamut there from a technology perspective, but we also work in the people and process pieces of that. So we've been doing this for a number of years, and uh, and it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a great great place to work. Today's moderator is Pamela Melville. You'll see her email address there. If for some reason you're having problems with your GoToWebinar and uh, you can't get help with the chat or question pane there, then you can actually hit her up at her email there, which is pamela.melville at innovativee.com. All right, well, without further ado, we will actually get into the core of the presentation. So today we're gonna to cover several things. We're gonna talk a little bit about what a business case is and why it's important. We're gonna talk about how people are handling business cases today in um, kind of broader terms of what do we see that's out there, us and, and our um, partners at Edison and other areas, other folks we work with. There's a, a broad spectrum of, of expertise we have in terms of what we see companies and organizations doing. We're gonna actually do a couple of demonstrations of the new Edison business case product and accompanied with that will be some screenshots. We'll also talk a little bit about how you can get going quickly with the product and um, we'll do some Q&A at the end, just anything that you guys have, any follow-up that you want, even if it's not related to, to, to this product or anything around business cases, um, anything you guys wanna talk about. Happy to talk about then if we don't have time, then we will certainly be happy to pick up a conversation with anyone after this webinar is over. So with that, I'd like to ask a fairly simple question. What is a business case? So I'm gonna actually give folks maybe about 30 seconds or so if you wanna hit in the, um, in the questions window there, if you actually wanna make a reply to what do you think a business case is? So I'll give you just a second, think about it, turn away from your other monitor and put hands on the keyboard. No, just kidding. <laughs> Justify an investment, yep. Almost exactly the same between Owen and John. Justification for an investment or a project, and you guys are good. So the, um, the Google definition, if you look it up, is a justification for a proposed project or undertaking based on its expected, and they actually had put commercial in there. I struck that out and I modified it a little bit. There's a lot of organizations who may not even be commercially oriented. It might be a government organization, so you may be doing something for your constituency. Um, if you, Even if you are an organization that is commercially oriented, you may have um, you know, some form of, of project or undertaking that you need to do that's not commercially oriented. It might not have a return on investment. It may be something that is um, you know, compliance driven or security driven or other things that you have to do that you, know, you have to do it as part of your uh, organizational, um, you know, what, what it is that you have to do, but it's not necessarily commercial benefit. So to that point, um, I also have an article, uh, this link will be 
available as part of the deck, which we'll make available. It's a really good article about what is business case. It actually starts with business case, goes into some of the, is it really worth the effort? And obviously, <laughs> not from spoiler alert, but the answer is yes, it's really worth doing and doing well. So if you're gonna do a business case and set that up and, and do it and do it well, what is kind of the state of, of how, how people are doing it today? So with that, <clears throat> we'll move to this slide, which talks a little bit about how do people do it today? And if anyone sees anything other than this, feel free to put it in the um, put it in the chat window. But we definitely see an awful lot of you know Excel-based type solutions. People are filling out forms for resourcing that are associated with uh, you know, might be a, an IT type of, of um, or a contract or some other type of initiative that requires a lot of resourcing. Uh, there's always a financial component to a business case, so Excel is almost always something that we see as part of a business case. Email, you almost always see that. People use that somewhat as a collaboration platform. Um, there's also a lot of information that's moved around in email. It could be Word docs, it could be PowerPoints, it could be Excel. Part of the problem with that is that you start to lose information pretty easily digging for what is the latest version. You know, Joe says, hey, I've got the latest version, and then Owen says, no, I've got the latest version. So you start to run into a lot of issues when you use that. The same is kind of true of the collaboration platform, although it's better than using email, and we see a lot of people are using things like SharePoint, you've got OneDrive, you've got Box, you've got all kinds of things where people are using collaboration platforms. And those are, you know, they're a step above and can help enhance uh, teams for collaboration. Yep, absolutely, uh, it's, it's a good way to go. Thanks for that, John. So those are all great collaboration platforms that that are a better way to do business cases, but there's still something that's missing there. And what is missing is kind of the standardization and some of the, the standard processes, the standard ways of doing it, the templatization of the business case. So with that, I'd like to get in and show you guys a little bit more about a new product. So I've got the, the big reveal there. This product came out earlier this year, at the very beginning of the year, I believe, and it's part of a family of products from Edison 365. We will talk a little bit more about what the whole family of products does, but the focus of this and the demos that we'll do today will be around the business case product. So I'm gonna jump right to a demonstration. So this is Edison business case. And the first thing you notice is it's a fairly clean, it's a, it's a web-based, modern uh, user experience type of application. It's built on top of O365. So anyone who's a Microsoft O365 user can use this platform easily and it actually integrates with 365 very well. So we'll show some of those integration points. We won't go too deeply into it. If anyone has more questions, we're happy to do that. But as you can see, it's a very clean way to uh, quickly look and see, you know, how many business cases have been added, how many are under review, how many are, have been approved. There's a, a nice scroller here, and everything you see here, by the way, is configurable. So this is branded to Edison. You could put your company or your organization logo here. You can change the look and feel, the background, the color schemes, all those kind of things you can do. The slider here can be customized. There's just some, you know, you may want to put some things in there around top initiatives in your company or other things like that. And so this is configurable. You can put multiple images in, things like that. But at a, at a glance, you also can see things like how many business cases are open, how many are under review, how many have been approved. So you've got some, and then if you add more in here, you also have ways to sort it by name, by date and stage. We only have four in our demo environment right now. So really, you know, the sorting is not a big deal, but it's a really simple and easy way to visualize these, the business case information across the board. What's also really neat about this, and you can't see it, is if, if you were on a tablet or on a, a mobile phone, these would um, this interface actually converts. It's a modular modern interface, so it would automatically convert. So if you were to have this on your phone, your iPhone, or your, your tablet, you, and it would just switch to a card type format and would show these more in a vertical alignment. But the idea there is that you can use it anywhere on any device, so that makes it really nice. So that's the first piece of the demonstration I'm gonna show. Now I'm gonna go through a little bit more about some of the feature functionality associated with with the product, and then we'll get to a, another demonstration and get into some 
some Q&A. So as we mentioned before, one of the things that we see is that the, the current processes are kind of letting organizations down. There's slower time for getting business cases approved and slower time leads to less value. For instance, if you're thinking about a business case, it's gonna, and I'll go through one in a few minutes, um, it, I just called it a data, data center migration to the cloud. There's a lot of cloud digital transformation type initiatives going on these days. So in this one, um, we'll see the numbers in a minute, but say that you're gonna get 20 or $30,000 per month positive return on investment after your investment's made, that this is actually gonna be yielding 20 or $30,000 a month. Why is it important to get things done faster, to get the case approved and get going faster? Well, if you get it approved next month, then you start realizing that value at the end of the project, say it's two or three months later, right? If it takes three or four months to get a business case approved, and that's not that unrealistic, we've seen that happen a lot, especially if there's in, you know, in, inefficient processes, then that extra three months times $30,000 is a $90,000 business benefit that you've now lost by not getting it done. So there's some really tangible, positive reasons to do you know, better streamlined business cases. Does anybody have any questions on that? I don't see anything in the question panel, so I will move along. So understanding how it helps, there's a variety of ways which Edison 365 business cases business case really helps. It really accelerates the process because it has standardized, um, formalized processes, and these processes are configurable and customizable to the way you like to do business. It's, it's completely form-driven and easy to customize. What we're, we'll be showing today is pretty much out of the box, a, a particular like uh, four-stage uh, business case process. Uh, it, one of the other things that's really important is, like any kind of work management solution, if you don't have the ability to easily see where things are, like a business case is a great example of a work management solution where it might be sitting on someone's desk or in their inbox or in the Dropbox or wherever it is and they're not doing anything with it. And then you're, you're hunting around for who's got it, right? So when you can expose who's got the, the ball <laughs> where it needs to be, then, then you start to get a lot better accountability. And with accountability, um, that responsibility moves forward and, and oftentimes get faster results. So again, the modern user experience also, not just is easy to use, but it also means that people can use it anywhere. So you often see that you have much better adoption and better adoption means that you're using it and if you're using it, you're getting value out of it. And so that last point down there is, you know, you really can manage things anywhere. You could be on your tablet in the airport and be able to, to work on your business case from there. Can you track the benefits? There are, Yes and no. <laughs> in the business case, you can actually um, add a benefits phase to it where you can do some tracking because like I said, it's all fully configurable. In the future, there's actually gonna be a benefits module that will be part of the Edison family, which will be able to track it. So you can really think about everything coming from the strategy on the one end through ideas, then business case projects and benefits realization. But the short answer is yes, you can do it. There's a way to do it with the product now. There'll be a better way to do it in the future. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, so moving into what is Edison really quickly. I alluded to it a moment ago. The Edison suite is built on top of the Office 365 platform. As such, it gives you a tremendous amount of capability of things that are already built in the Office 365. So if you're already a 365 user, you, you layer in these products and you can buy you can buy them individually or as a as a um, as a suite. When you layer them on top of 365, you get the advantage of things like you everyone already has single sign-on. You have the ability, it just integrates directly with the existing Microsoft APIs and and all of the existing Microsoft tools and underlying technologies. And I'll give a, a quick demonstration of that in a minute with Delve, but the other thing that it does is it allows you to carry information if you decide to move them from ideas to business case to projects, it allows you to maintain that data seamlessly throughout. So if you start with an idea and then you, it becomes, you know, it's kind of like a funnel if you think about it. You have a lot of ideas, a few ideas will become business cases, a few business cases will become projects, but as they move down that funnel, you can maintain the data all the way through so you don't have duplicity of effort and possible data loss for renaming of things and, and that kind of thing. Uh, 
So it's, it's really a nice, powerful suite of products. So going a little bit more about what business case itself is, you can see that we've got the two lines. At the top line, it talks about what ideas does. The bottom one is projects. Business case kind of sits in the center. So again, we're looking at a way to have a complete view of all of your business cases in one place. You can do all your cost benefit. You can estimate your resources. You can do the approval workflows and know where work is or if it's stuck. And then at the end, you can actually initiate projects with it. Any other questions so far? So we will move into the intuitive uh, user experience. I, I talked about this a few minutes ago. It's got the card-based responsive design. This is a, another screenshot of it, one that's actually got more. You can see that there's more business cases that are open there. Uh, it's got easily visible key performance indicators. Um, it's easy to use, so the adoption is quick. It really, literally, you can have this up and running and you know, as soon as it's installed in the tenant, it can be, and it's provider hosted, by the way, so there's really no, nothing other than a small um, application load that has to happen in your 365 tenant. Other than that, it installs in a matter of hours, and it's up and running, and it's easily integrated with the other Edison modules, as I mentioned before. Another really key piece of this is that it, it establishes you know, this is one of those work management solutions that we see, and you know, we've worked with hundreds of customers over the years, and everyone has, there's, there's certain pockets of work management. Uh, ideation is one, business case is another, that everyone, everyone does it, and everyone kind of does it a little differently. And because there's oftentimes no standardization within an organization, yeah, you may have a standard form for here's what you gotta go fill out for a business case, but then how you're actually tracking it and the repeatable process and is there automated workflows and things like that, that's almost never there. So when you have it in a central way of doing it, it becomes something that you gain a lot of efficiencies from people doing it the same way all the time. And you've got all those key metadata pieces that we're talking about capturing here. So all of these things are really important, right? Uh, oops, I, I went to one too fast. Uh, the benefits, pitfalls, cost, resources, those kind of things are all uh, very important to track when you're looking at doing business cases. And there's also multiple ways that you can look at the, the data and, and you can also create multiple templates as we talked about before. So with that, I'm gonna actually get into, yes, you can track historical business cases. Thanks for the question. Not only can you track them, you can actually create multiple versions of the business case. So if you want to have one version that, say, you have a particular way that you're going to approach a project, and then maybe you have a, uh, a less extensive version, so you, you, you might want to take the management, hey, here's our, this, if we could have you know, everything we want, this is the way we do this project, and it's going to cost $2 million. And you might have another version that says, well, we could live with $1 million, <laughs> and here's how we would do it. It would be a you know, a different version of the same case. So you can do both of those. That's a great question. So, thank you. All right, so back to the interface. So again, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna scroll down and I'm gonna pick on a case that we've already created here. And this is a move data center to the cloud. So there's a lot of these kinds of initiatives going on these days. So I thought it would actually, we, we built a, case around doing this. So what you'll see at the top is a Chevron, which allows you to track the stages that your business case is in. So you have, this is a four stage, basically workflow that moves your business case through the stage. So you start with a draft, which makes sense, right? And then you can open it and work it. And where we're at now is we're in the um, analyze and review stage, and then you can have a decision where you just, you know, it's a, it's a go or no go. So there's a lot of data that you can enter into here. And again, um, all of this is configurable. Uh, we actually added a couple of these stages in just for the demo today. You can add your own, you can change different things around. You can associate them with uh, different other pieces of data to see how you wanna present it. So when you have the case here, you have, you have these tabs now, which further define You've got the case itself, the problems, project overview, strategic alignment, and cost benefits. So I'm actually going to walk through each of these tabs with you for this phase or for this for this case. So in the executive summary, you know, I've entered some information, 
say, you know, you're going to move all your tier one through three apps through your your data center and move it to the cloud because, you know, you've got too high cost and app availability. You know, you've got a, a lot a lot of runtime cost of two million dollars. So, you know, your recommendation is to move it to the cloud and undertake a project to do so. And then the ju cost, the justification of these things increase um, availability, better security, cost reduction. And then you can go and define your team down here. Um, so somebody, John, is asking, are all these tabs and headings configurable, meaning can we add some more or remove others? Absolutely. This is These are ones that are with the template that came out of the box. You could say, uh, you know, anticipated outcomes isn't important to me. That's something different. You could replace it with a different one. You could take it out altogether. Every single piece here is all configurable. Great, John. And if you want to see more on that, we won't touch too much on the configuration. I'll show the configuration tab today. But... Um, because you could spend a lot of time going through how you actually configure it. It's it's easy to do. It's all form space and driven, but it's um there's you know a lot of different ways you could go with that. So moving into the problems and alternatives, um, you know, we just said added some things there. It's a drain on organizational profitability. Uh, moving to the project overview, we actually can go ahead and say, what does it look like when we want to start it, end it? What's the what's the name of it? What's the business goals? Um, you know, th some of these kinds of things. The other thing that you can do is you can go down and say, you know, what are the major risks associated with it? So in this case, we said, well, you could have service disruption. If you don't do this right, some of your tier one apps could go out. And what does that look like? So it's standard risk analysis. And again, this is configurable. So you could say probability versus impact. And, you know, what is what's your contingency plan? So you've got a mitigation plan, a contingency plan. It's all open. You, you're supposed to have your follow-up plan done by 5-3. So all these kinds of things that you can do that you would normally want to do as part of a business case. Another really interesting piece is you can start to look at loading in your resources. You can say, all right, so from our perspective, and you'll see in a minute with the way we built this case is it's going to have a combination of internal resources and vendor resources. So there's a project manager, which would be part of our company. Um, there's also the service desk impact. So our help desk would be impacted by this. So we said, you know, we're going to kick it off in May and our project manager is going to be close to full time, 120 out of 160 hours a month until September, and then there'll be some wind down time in October. The service desk, we're going to have to start ramping them up before we do the, the rollout, and then we're going to keep them at at least one FTE around to make sure that they can answer questions and, and all that kind of good stuff. So you can see that there's, uh, can let's see, another question. Can the resource demand be entered FTE or always, always hours? Um, right now, well, you could, right, the way we did it in this case is, is hours. Um, you could enter it as FTE so long as you knew that it was FTEs. Um, that would be a, a way that you'd want to think about um, how you're standardizing on, on what data you're putting in here. This actually doesn't, at this time, um, make any connection to any kind of project data like with Pro Microsoft Project or anything else. So you could you could go in and enter the data so long as you're making sure you know how to do it. Yep, sure thing, John. So. So this kind of sets your, your internal resource profile and everything that's associated with your project overview. The next piece is kind of cool. It's pretty simplistic, but it's pretty powerful. Um, what, what's the strategic alignment? So a lot of organizations will say, we, we've got goals, st strategic drivers, and they're oftentimes in these kinds of buckets, right? It's cost reduction, risk reduction, revenue increase. There's others, compliance, other things that you could have in there. And so here you can go in, you can actually say, these were the things you remember I put in the executive summary that we were wanting to do. And now how aligned are you? Highly aligned, moderately aligned. So this gives you some ways to go in and, and align to your strategic drivers for your organization, um, which will be very important to, you know, your executives as they want to say, how do we rank this against our other initiatives? Because at some point you, you'll come down to the conversation of, well, there's only so much money and resources to go around. So moving into the cost benefit, this is actually one of the cooler tabs that um, where you can actually go and start to put a lot of the financial metrics in it. So what we did here is we loaded this up and said, all right, we're going to have a, a migration effort. So we know we're going to go select a migration vendor and we've got a bunch of costs associated with these with this vendor. Um, and again, it's going to run from May through October. So. You know, it starts up like 50,000 as we do our mobilization, then 100 and a couple hundred thousand, then they run out at 100,000 per month. So it's like 570,000 we're going to have to pay for our vendor to help us do this. Um, we've also got our cloud costs. So these are new recurring costs that will go into the future. This is a 
you know, what we're going to pay for our, our Azure cloud or whatever we've decided to go to. And then there's ongoing personnel costs which are associated with it. Now, you're going to reduce costs of um, data center folks, but you're still going to have some level of costing associated with it. So um, uh, that's a great question, Owen. I will, yes, the, um, can you export the forecast demand cost benefit tables for reporting tools like Power BI? Absolutely. You can make all of this information available for Power BI so that you could go. I actually don't have that set up for this demo, but it's something we could show someone later if they're interested. So now you've got your cost curve that you've built up here, and you can go and start to build in your financial benefits. So now you say, okay, um, what, are, what are some of the benefits that we're going to get out of it? Well, we're, we're going to decommission the, the facility. So after September, we're no longer going to pay 50000 a month for our data center, right? Um, our personnel savings are going to be very significant because we don't have to have people to run the data center and do all the server maintenance and all of those kinds of things. So we've got like 116000 per month that we're going to take out there, cost out of that. Um, one of the other financial benefits is we've done an analysis to say, you know, the uptime of these this cloud thing should give us more sales on our tier one um, commerce servers. So we're going to estimate that $10,000 per month. So you're building out your whole whole plan here. Oh, by the way, um, we also build it out for 2019 and we build it out for all of 2022. So you can actually see how these cost, the, the, the costs go run out and then the, the financial benefits run out as well. So there's also non-financial benefit, less security breaches, and we've estimated those with some, some time in there. And then um, what happens is you now get your your whole financial summary, your investment appraisal down here at the bottom. So you've got your, your costs, your benefits, your costs, um, disbenefits, things like that. And what's cool here is you, with one click now, you can go and get some charts. So this is actually a chart that shows you your, your cost curve and your benefit curve, and you haven't actually hit the break-even point in 2019. But what's cool is you, sh you shift over to 2020 and you say, hey, I'm, I'm well ahead to the break-even curve and we're actually making money. And if you wanted to do this on a uh, return on investment curve, you can just click this little button here. It shows your return on investment. Obviously, you're taking cost out the beginning, so that's where your investment curve before you realize the benefit. And then you move over into 2020 and it's all it's all benefit there. So you're all on the positive side of the curve. So it's a really cool way to very easily go and do you know, a, an, invest, an investment appraisal for, for your business case, which is a big piece of most business cases. Um, with that, that's the, the basic pieces I wanted to hit um, in terms of the demo. Um, you can get to the decision and everything um, in another piece. So I'm gonna flip back over and just wrap up the slide. So we'll have a few minutes for, um, can you do your own curves like IRR, internal rate of return? I believe so, John, um, but that's something um, we would have to talk about offline. So good question. We'll take that as a, an offline question. So moving forward from here, uh, just to kind of sum up, you know, as we showed you, and this is another screenshot that has considerably more business cases in it, you can see the whole case portfolio We'll add a snapshot and you can organize it with all kinds of you know nice easy to wait and use things you can do it by name stage date etc you can identify it and resolve approval bottlenecks again the accountability piece for who's got what when and where's the information you can easily understand personal task and and time scales oh i did forget to show one thing if you guys don't mind i'm going to go back to the demo for one second uh something i meant to show uh the integration point so I missed this in my notes. So one of the things I mentioned is that it integrates with uh, all of the Office products out of the box. So when you go to your personal tab here, this is the, shows the things that I could be working on. There's a, a button here that says uh, View Company Profile. So what this does is this actually is my Delve page. So this automatically launches my personal Delve page. So you can see, and this integrates with, you know, Delve is one of, the, for those who don't know, one of the Microsoft products that comes out of the box with 365. And I find it very interesting because it's like a snapshot of everything that's going on in my day. So here's my calendar. Here's some of the people I've been interacting with in my company. Um, here's some of the, the most recent documents I've been using. And you know, there's all kinds of great stuff in here. So this just one piece of integration that is shown here that um, it's just really nice that works with the, the Office 365 stack. So I'm going to flip back over to the deck. 
So past that, uh, it's fully configurable. As a couple folks ask, um, can I change these forms? Yes, as you see here, this is, I didn't go into it, but there's a, a little settings gear you can go to and you can define things like these um, forms, the tables, the fields, everything is definable. Um, it, like anything else that's this configurable and definable, you have to understand how the relationships between the forms and the fields and all that work. But it's not very difficult. It's, it's all WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get kind of driven. So it's, it's easy to do. Within a couple hours, you can pretty much figure out anything you need to do from all your configurations and things like that to you know, add stages to um, be able to change the, some of the, the ways that you want to look at things. So with that, the, um, the next piece to talk about is just, you know, it's easy to get going. Like I said, it's built on top of 365. So if you were interested in doing this, you, the thing to do is get, um, you know, a Q&A for folks who would be, you know, on the teams that would be using a, a product like Business Case. It might be your controllers. It might be your financial analysts. It might be people in your PMO. Um, there's different types of job titles who often do this, but you can set it up, as we said, um, for a pilot. It's literally, you know, a, a couple days usually if you work with your, your IT involvement is like 30 minutes and um, just get it installed in the 365 tenant. And then you can start doing it. And it's, um, it's really quick and efficient. So with that, uh, I would like to move to um, Q&A. Thanks a lot. I appreciate everybody attending. Some really good questions, good engagement. Um, are there additional questions? We're trying to get this done in a fairly quick time, so we can keep it to about 45 minutes overall. So I'd like to open up the floor to questions. Um, what's the cost of this per user? Um, you know, I knew somebody was going to ask, and I don't have the pricing right in front of me. Um, Tad, do you have the retail cost? It's 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 relatively inexpensive. It's a subscription base, like most of the Microsoft products are. Um, I want to say it's. I was asking Tad. I think he's on um, from. Hey, I'm Mike. I'm just trying to grab it up. It's like Office 365. It's licensed per user per month, so it's the same subscription fee, and the prices are going to range you know, based off the number of users. So it's probably best just to follow up with that. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. But it's, 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 you know, really economical. I mean, we're not talking hundreds of dollars. We're talking, you know, tens of dollars per users. Um, trial versions. Yes, we can do a trial version. Um, we can set up one in a trial tenant. Um, that's a great question. One of the things we, a lot of customers will find, though, is it's um, better to go ahead and do one in their tenant if they already have a 365 tenant because then any of the things that they build persist and they don't have to go recreate them. So it's any of the configurations and all that. Um, so John says estimate cost for 20 and then 100 users. So we will definitely get you that information back, John. Great question. So any other questions? Give everybody a minute here. Everybody understand how it kind of works with the three with Office 365. It's a uh, takes advantage of all of the 365 capabilities. It does not interface with the question is it does not interface to MS Project today. This product specifically does not. Um, it will all of the metadata that is if a business case is approved can be put into Project. Um, what it doesn't do is interface with Project as ongoing past that metadata going over, if that makes sense. There is another product called Edison Projects, which does, um, it looks very similar. It's got the same look and feel, modular design. It's actually been around, it's the oldest product in the Edison family. It's been around for, I don't know, six or seven years now. Um, and it, it does a great job of making um, my uh, project actually easier to use and more effective. So we can talk more about that as well, John, if you'd like to. Uh, I've got another question here. Does it have anything to identify someone suggesting the same idea over? Um, yes, you can um, mark ideas as duplicate, and um, and then basically you can merge them together um, by, by doing that. Uh, can you promote accepted business case into projects? Yes, that's um, and, and if I didn't make that clear to John's question, that's a great question. Yes, you can basically say this this project is approved it'll become a project and then that metadata can be taken into Microsoft Project. Whether you use the Edison um, project product or not, if you just use project, at, project out of the box, you still can consume that metadata. 
So like all of your, um, it would basically be the, the information that would go for those who are familiar with PDPs, your project detail pages, all that metadata would, would then go over to that when you create the new project. Okay, um, any other questions? Really good questions and interaction, I appreciate it. So as you guys are thinking about it, I will um, reiterate that we will make this available. Pamela will be sending you guys a link to the video and all of our contact information's here. We will make a PDF of this deck as well and send it to you. So if you wanted to remember how to contact us or find like the link to that PMI article or any of those kind of things, um, you could do that. Um, so if there are no more questions, we will wrap it up and really appreciate everybody attending today and hope to hear from you soon. Have a great day. Thank you very much.